humanity survived. Our ancestors have destroyed the world, and we had to pay the price. With over a hundred years without sunlight, But we have prepared ourselves for our chance to make things right. They stole from us a life of happiness. Still, we will make the best of it. Even though Mother Earth is grim and tainted, we have managed to survive. And we will keep surviving. Oh wow, that is one amazing introduction. Hello there everyone, it's King Hedgehog here and welcome to Endzone A World Apart. Endzone is a post-apocalyptic survival city builder where we're going to be starting a new civilization with just a group of people right after a global nuclear disaster. Now since we haven't played the game before, we're going to go uh, start off here with a new game and just start off with playing a tutorial. We finally left the end zone. Just look at this beautiful scenery. It's marvelous, even though it's a bit different from what we had pictured. We were able to secure a few basic resources and are storing them in our bus. All right, so let's uh, build ourselves a new home. I'm glad we prepared ourselves well for this kind of scenario, especially since our inventories in the end zone ran low. Don't forget that if you need additional information, you can look at our survival guide at any time. All right, so right up here on the left top corner, we do have the survival guide, which basically uh, is the journal explaining everything that we have. Nice. I do have to say there's some really nice well background done. music. Everything you need to know should be right here. I think the time has come for us to at last build ourselves a new home here. Okay, buddy, we before said that before. Before we can construct buildings at all, we have to assign the profession builder to several settlers so that they can take care of construction contracts. In general, it's your responsibility to decide which tasks are important and how our settlers are supposed to be distributed to attend to them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to open the provisions menu right up there. And just like we have in Banished, we uh, need to send a couple of builders now. We want right. to start with three. Your builders will be ready as soon as construction contracts have been issued. It's time to start focusing on our key and most basic need, water. Well, here, plenty. Just walk, take. The first thing we ought to do is to establish a working water supply. So we'll move on to our first construction contract. Place and build a jetty by a lake in the vicinity of your town center. All right, so we're gonna go here into the building menu and we have the jetty. Now let's flip that around. Oh, right about there seems to be the right place. All right, you guys gonna move? All right, let's put under the, the game speed so they can actually move. All right, now let's speed that up. Good of all day for this. There you go, look at that. Wow. Very good. The jetty was completed as planned. Now we have a place where we can collect water. There well, are other possibilities to gather water too, but the jetty is the simplest and most cost-effective method. Well, cheap and effective. That's what we like. We can obtain and store water from different sources like a jetty, rain collector, or well in the cistern. 
The cistern should always be in close proximity to a water source so that our water carriers don't have to walk too far. All right, buddy, you say so, so let's get the cistern right. Well, right next to it should do the trick, right? We can put it right up here. Although we do need to keep an eye out that we supply our city with water. So if I'm going to take this as the main road going in, it should be right about there. That ought to do. I think that also gives us the option to... Yeah, see, we can pull the road straight here. Can't do roads yet, but baby steps, we'll get there. All right, guys. Now, you want water, all you have to do is open up your mouth and look up. Plenty of water coming from the sky. Look at that. Nice cistern. All right, now we need people to carry the water as well. Assign settlers to the professional water carrier. Three. All right. One, two, and three. There you go. Got four people left to carry all other stuff around. All right, let's uh, get a move on it. We need to produce 100 water. Ada, let's go. Chop, chop. Work to be done. That's 75, so they carry 25 water each, which is not too bad. All right, guys, there we go. And the next one, drop your bucket right in there. And there you go. All right, great. We now have installed a working water supply and water is now transported from the Yeti to our cistern. Consider hiring more water carriers if you don't have enough settlers available. You can never have enough water in storage. All right. Now we should focus on food production. It's important to ensure the supply right from the start. A gatherer's cabin, a hunting lodge, or a fishing hut can directly remedy the situation. I suggest starting with a fishing hut, since we're already located near a lake. Yeah, let's get ourselves some radiated fish. All right, fish. Food. There we go. Fishing hut. Flip you around. Um, there you go. Just like that. There you don't fit. And neither do you there. Now, I would have liked to get you in line with that, but that apparently doesn't want to work. All right, we'll do it right there. There we go. Fish. Water. So... That's where we want to get all the food. What is this here? It's a tractor. Ah, oh, yeah. It's a tractor, but it just gives us some scrap. It does look really, really cool, though. Nice. And what do we have here? This is just a pile of scrap. Heavy duty truck. All right. I mean, I wish that we could, um, well, we might actually have no idea, but I wish that we could just repair them and eventually use them. But from what I've seen from other playthroughs, etc., I, uh, I don't think that's going to be an option, but let's have a look. All right. Speed up time. Let's get this building done. We don't have any wood. We need 17 wood, 22 scrap and 40 product construction progress. All right. So it's uh, another type of city builder, but there's different things that we need to keep in mind, uh, while doing so. All right, and now we need to assign one. So we can use the classic menu down here, which is similar to Banished, or like in Banished, we can assign it directly here as well. There we go. Um, let's actually get two, because it wants to, and we need to produce 50 fish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get some fish in them. Oh, wow. Good work. Wow. We've now taken care of our basic supply via food and water. Make sure that you have enough food and water on hand at all times, especially if you want to upgrade your settlement. A population that grows too fast can quickly unbalance your food and water supply, bringing major difficulties for you if you don't watch out. All right, buddy, if you say so. Crops are another excellent way of getting food because they constantly grow as long as the soil is moist enough. Each seed has different yields and growing times. This means that it could take some time until your field is ready to be harvested. In contrast to your fishing hut, where production can be right away. All right, so ironically enough, all right, that's okay. So here you can see the blue part, that is the wet part here. The green is moist and this orangey is uh, what is dry. And then, well, we don't have very dry. We don't have dried out. That will get uh, when we get a drought. Now, I think, I want to have a little bit of space around my fields. 
Um, let's build it right up here. I think that would make sense. All right, let's go here. Cultivated field. And we will get you... Yeah, why not? Right next to the settlement. Let's do a 10 by 10 for you. And by 10. There. And then we can do another one. Another 10 by 10. There you go. All right, so now we need a couple of farmers. I know it says only one, but we got two fields. Might as well. All right, now we need to choose a seat. I want... Uh, one black salsify, sure. Looks good. Yeah, it Remember does, right? That we need the widest variety of food sources to stay healthy. That's you why we have to plan ahead for drought periods that might come when it's not going to rain. Stock up on food and adapt your production to avoid bottlenecks. I'll show you a few more strategies later on. All right. At the beginning, we don't have much scrap wood or other resources. We could build a production building, but to obtain resources as fast as possible, it's best that we start gathering right away. Assign a gather all resources task. All the settlers who haven't been assigned any profession by you are going to accept these kinds of tasks. In addition, settlers distribute resources within your settlement. All right, so let's reduce these ones to only two. Um, and well, we've got two farmers. We kind of need those at the moment. Then in here, you say resources, right? No tasks. Ah, there we go. Gather wood. Um, yeah, well, we're going to be building our city in this direction. I assume we'll look at that. Nice. Um, so let's do the gathering right about there. And then we need to do the same for scrap. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll assign you right next to it. All right, so now we need to assign a couple of gatherers, right? Yes, no, maybe. Ah, three settlers. Three. All right, so we'll reduce one builder. There you go. Now we need to produce 15 scrap and 20 wood. Speed up time. Should do the trick. No longer need to see. There. Ah, they carry everything to this uh, big old bus. You didn't know that, but there's an awful lot of storage that goes on inside that bus. Maybe they have an underground bunker or something. Okay, guess what we're looking at? 16 out of 20 wood produced. There we go, 20 out of 20. 10 out of 15 scrap already, so we're doing pretty good. Now, next load of stuff gets delivered there. And that should bring us to the 15 scrap that we need. Homeless settlers build additional houses. We'll get to that eventually. Since there. we now own plenty of resources, we can start to build a real production building. Then you don't have to always make efforts by hand that collecting is taking place. Production buildings are not only easier to manage, they are also distinctly more effective than simple tasks. Don't place production buildings too far away from your settlement. You'll be able to change their working area at any time later on. All right, so what's the next thing that we need to right make? On. The best thing for us to do now is to build a forester's lodge to automate our supply of wood and make it more effective at the same time. Foresters are not only able to chop down trees, they reforest areas with trees as well. All right, so um, if we hover over it, we can see that the local attractiveness uh, right above the arrow there is at minus two. So we don't want too much of that close to where uh, we're going to be building our houses because they will complain about it. So we'll just drop it down here for now. And do we still have builders assigned? Well, we need one forester, which is done. All right, there we go. Now we need to produce 20 wood, which is okay. Now, I did already remove the other two. Because I need to free up the people uh, to build this and then also become the foresters. And I've assigned a couple of extra people here just to fill the water tank. Just to make sure that we have enough water. Because if we can see here, there's a draw coming up. We need to make sure we have enough water for that time. All right, now let's speed this thing up. Let's get this place built. Now, they do need to walk a little bit further in order to get everything here. Um, I don't have any settlers to transport resources. So let's free up one and... 
Well, let's wait for the forester. We can reassign him in a moment, but let's first get all the resources here that we need in order to build this forester's lodge. There we go, almost there. And there we go. All right, we reassign the forester. All right, and now we need to wait for him to produce 20 wood, which seems to be okay because he's already started to chop down. Now here we can uh, choose what we want him to do. If we want him to cut down and reforest, if we want him to just cut down, or if we only want him to reforest. So eventually, probably this, we will tell him to just cut down and not reforest. And then we can assign him areas around to give uh, a nice green forest for everybody who's going to be living there. All right, now let's speed up time. Let's get the 20 wood produced. Yeah, see, the water tank is nice and full, which means we can now reduce it back to only one. You can maintain it at the moment. We're looking at a wood production. See, there we go. We need to produce 20 wood, and as a reward, we get 50 wood. All right, that's the first eight. And there we go. Good job. You might want to change this building's working area later on to tell your workers where they should get their wood from. Ah, and for your information, if you want, you can also tell your forester's lodge that they only ought to attend to reforesting an area in order to create a lush, green forest which generations to come can use. There we go. That's exactly what Very we might do. Good. Now we ought to take care of collecting scrap. Scrap is one of the most valuable resources because the quantities present are limited and we can recover other resources from scrap. Unlike the task we just had, the scrap yard allows larger quantities of existing scrap to be dismantled than with ruins or wrecks. All right, so what is it that we need to build? We need to build ourselves a scrap yard. Nice, all right, we can do that. Now, this one has the same issue, but instead of minus two, it gives a local attractiveness of minus four. So we want to um, keep him well away of where we're going to be putting. So I'm just going to put him down here and we will reassign him to clear this area in a later stage that once we need to start building our houses, we can nicely do that in the easterly direction. At least I assume that's going to be east to the right. All right, speed up time. And, of course, we also need to assign ourselves a scrap collector. There you go. That's already done now. We've got two of those. They can already start collecting. Here we get the notification. Oncoming drought. Stockpile water and food in order to survive. The soil is going to become infertile. Yes, but, well, we've got uh, food growing on here. Crop yields 251, 252. So we're not doing too bad on that side. How are we looking? Food got 1,340. You guys are still producing, but once we end up in a drought, then also the lake here will dry up and then it will magically refill as soon as we hit uh, season number nine. Now, the cistern is uh, nice and full with 2,000 water, so we can't complain about the water either. How are you looking? Well, you're waiting for scrap. Which kind of makes sense. Do we have scrap? Yeah, we still we have 145 scrap. So we're just waiting for people to bring it along. And there we go. So now <laughs> that was actually built faster than I was expecting. Um, all right. So in this case, I do need to reassign it because there's not too much scrap around here. So let me and there we go. Now you can nicely see all the orange. All that is scrap that can be collected. So we'll just set it for... Um, well, I might actually start off here, but now nah, let's just select it there. There you go. So he's going to start off here and he will start collecting all of this. And then eventually it will go further out and further out. And that's going to be the main of it. All right. So next thing we need to do is we need to produce 20 scrap. Speed up the time again. Now let's have a look. Now we get that uh, nice and sorted. Great. You can change the working area for the scrap yard too. We can recycle scrap into four additional resources. Cloth, metal, plastic, and electronics. We'll do that shortly, but for now we ought to take care of your settlers' needs first. All right. Our people want a place to sleep and live. Cabins fulfill their need for safety and privacy, and increase the confidence of their inhabitants. 
In other words, building cabins increases their willingness to start families and <laughs> reproduce, if you know what I mean. Mm, in other words, they want privacy. All right, so um, up here we can see our confidence meters. This means that they're not too happy. Um, this is just average, but this is the bar that we want to get them into so they have a higher rate of reproduction, which is an up and a down, um, higher efficiency, and newborn settlers will live longer. Higher speed of movement, newborn settlers will live distinctly longer. All right, so that is one, two, and three different stages that we have there. All right, now let's get this done. We need to build ourselves eight cabins. I wasn't ready for the cabins building yet. Um, let's go in here and we want in housing cabins. All right, now if I build you here, let's turn you. Can you fit exactly one? Two. Exactly. Perfect. So I'll leave one in between. Two, three, and I can't build here at the moment because there's still scrap in the way. That is five, six, and also there is in the way. All right, so that is one, two, three more, plus the seven that we're building now, which means I might actually need to get rid of these guys. So let's start with... Um, collecting the scrap here. Yeah, let's do that. All right, do I have any free settlers? I've got five of them. That's good. So let them get rid of the scrap here. So I can also build the rest of the houses. I did do the scrap collector, right? Yes. Perfect. Now, in the meanwhile, I'll uh, get the cabin open. Just that as soon as they are done taking something apart here... I can start putting down a new house. You need ruins. Ah, okay, so that can only be done by the scrapyard. All right, that works. So, scrapyard. Let's get them to work on these ones first, then. All right, so he's really spoiling, uh, spoiling the area here. And we are nearly at the draw. All right, so yes, exactly. These are the ones I need you to work on first. That one will be next. There's only five scrap left here. Perfect. Almost there. It would be nice, though, if we could tell them that we want them to remove that first. All right, so there we go. That is that one. Now, we need a couple more houses. So that is one and two. Now, we need one more. But for that, we need to get rid of the truck first. And for that, I need to reassign this again. That's the forester. That's the scrap yard. All right, now I will speed up time again and then let's wait for them to uh, finish that. Besides cabins, you can also provide sturdy houses and shelters as housing. Sturdy houses withstand sandstorms better and have an increased storage capacity to boot. Children living in houses gradually fill up the house's stockpiles. Settlers do not reproduce in a shelter because they lack privacy. Told you they wanted privacy. All Let's right. return from our excursion into housing and refocus on scrap. With the help of a recycler or refinery, scrap can be sorted into four different resources. A recycler always takes scrap apart, one resource at a time, while a refinery automatically produces all four resources. To start off, you should build a recycler and produce cloth. All right, so we need to get ourselves probably the recycler. Exactly. And now we need only one. All right. So I'll put you right next to the scrap yard, which I think is going to make sense here. All right, now I will build a second one straight away, but for now we're only... Well, we've got the people for it. How are we looking with water? 
Look at that plenty. I mean, there's no water left here whatsoever. But in there, in the water tank in the system, we still got 1,800 and odd. Which is perfect. Alright, now these guys are going to be building this relatively soon. Speed is namely up nicely up at uh, times 3. Alright, now here we do have the different views as well. So we can see the radiation, which is not too much at the moment. Radiation moves. There is plenty of scrap still all around here. Very nice. Very nice. Alright, so that's where our bus is. Now, I am starting to plan ahead already um, a little bit. I know I'm going to probably regret a couple of buildings, but I want to have the housing district here. I want to have the farming up here. Production area is really going to be mainly down here, as far away as feasible from our houses. But we do need to keep it semi-compact at the moment, because otherwise they're going to be traveling too much. All right, now I need to assign this bad boy to cloth, which it is. We've got ourselves, well, two refiners on there. So we should be uh, pretty fast done with producing the four cloth. Still a thousand one hundred and fifty seven scrap nearby. So we're not doing too bad there either. Alright, now you should start producing, guys. I do like it how far we can actually zoom in and the way they've made the buildings, it's really, really cool to see. I mean, it is literally people who have been gathering scrap and everything has been built from scrap. And they haven't been forging or anything yet. They literally just cabbaged around and whatever they found is what they used in order to slap things together again. It looks nice. Alright, so we're producing cloth, right? Would be appreciated if you could actually start. There we go, that is two and that is four. Recycler to produce a different resource at a time. It's important that you focus on the resources you really need, at least in the beginning. Cloth and metal look like good options if you want to equip us with protective clothing and tools. Alright. Happy settlers are industrious settlers. That's why we ought to look after our people and protect them against the surroundings and dangers, like radiation. So, let's start by transforming our newly recovered cloth into protective clothing. A tailor will be able to help us with that. Oh, but yet yeah, newly recovered. Mm -hmm. I mean, you chose your words very, very carefully. All right, so what do we want next? Um, now the tailor shop is right down there. Now, you a big boy. But you can also go right next door. Do you have any... Yeah, also a local attractive. It does have uh, minus two. So we'll just put you also here with uh, the industrial buildings. Now, we need a tailor shop. We need to assign one settler to be a tailor. There you go. And we need to produce one next scarf. But for that first, let's uh, build ourselves that uh, tailor shop. All right. Speed the game up again a little bit. And then we're pretty much getting settled on all uh, the basic necessities. Look at that. Our crops are doing uh, pretty well. Food variety. They're medium happy with that. And look at that. Our uh, con contentedness. Wow, that is uh, an interesting combination of letters. Um, so they are switching between average to, um, to very content, actually. Which is good. We like that. We have a good confidence in uh, what we're doing so far. Now, the tailor is uh, nearly being built. We need 22 more scrap, which they can just literally pick up from next door. But uh, look at that. So that's what they're doing. Everything is being picked up here from the bus. So they go inside the bus, I think, down in the bunker. Because look at the amount of stuff that has been stored in that bus. It is either a really, really big bus on the inside. Or there's a bunker underneath. Because... 3,264 food, 293 logs, 495 scrap. Oh yeah, and the water is right in here. Now, you're looking at 1,500. We might actually get you an additional water gatherer. Just because we can. We still have one settler uh, spare. Should be getting some kits soon, though. Although I didn't look at what we had before, but I don't think we're doing bad so far. Alright, so tailor shop is good. Next scarf eventually you're going to be working on it oh this is what you need to do. ah so that's how i can also change it all right nice but 
We need you to produce a neck scarf, please. Take the cloth, stretch it a little bit, make it look longer, and then they can wrap it around their face. Not sure why we need a tailor for that. All right, nearly done. Production limit is 100. We don't have any in stock. I know, that's why we just start making them. We categorize environmental radiation into four levels. No radiation, low level, medium level, and high level radiation. The radiation changes constantly and is influenced by weather and contaminated rain. Protective clothing helps to protect us against this kind of radiation, but it takes a while before it's produced. And production relies on a steady flow of incoming resources. Try to establish production chains at an early stage and start to stockpile goods so that some are always on hand. Yes. The tools we brought along from the end zone are slowly but surely running out. So now, let's focus on manufacturing new tools. The tools will help us to work effectively. We'll need metal for that, so we'll prepare for production by building another recycler, which Already will commission way ahead of to you, recover buddy. metal from scrap. After that, we'll need a workshop to enable the manufacturing of brand new tools. All right, let's do that. So the second recycler we already built, we already have a second one assigned. We now assigned the metal to it. So he will start to recover metal, which is good because we only have 12 left and we have a 14 cloth and now we need to build ourselves a workshop. Now, if we have the tutorial open, I can also click on here and it will show me exactly where to find it. And he also has a local attractiveness of minus two. All right, now I'm now going to leave one block space in between. And of course I cannot. So in that case, I'll just put the road right there. Here, because I want to be able to go in this direction and this uh, little bump in there is going to uh, make life difficult. All right, so we also need to assign one person as a technician. There you go. And we speed up time again. Let's get this also built so we have... Uh, our basic clothing, we've got our tools, we've got the basic resources coming in, food and water, so we're doing really, really well. Look at that, even our farms. How are we looking with our um, soil moisture? All right, so this is the rain. Oh, look at that. See, and now the fields are nice and uh, moist again, which is perfect because that's exactly what we needed. Now, radiation is not yet an issue because we're doing the tutorial, so it keeps radiation to uh, really a minimum. Right, only down there. But eventually we're going to get uh, swamped with radiation. All right, now he is complaining because we have a production limit of 500. 500 scrap, and that's exactly what we have. We've got 501 in stock. 22 of them are reserved, but production limit is at 500. Now I could increase it, but the problem is we don't have storage. So these guys need to work a little bit faster or... We need to get ourselves just another couple of recyclers going. So let me flip this one around. Get another two built right behind it. And probably in the next episode, we're going to have to start looking at turning these ones for different resources. But for now, they can also do the metal. Because metal is going to be something that we're definitely going to need. So I will already assign you to metal as well as you. Or you might actually start with plastic already. Let's get stocked up on uh, both of those. Now, what are you? Your call. Right, so we have electronics, we have plastic. Plastic we can work on, electronics we don't have yet. With everything else we can start to uh, dock up on. And then we can do with another two refiners. Now look at that, we're starting to get some kids. Some of the kids are actually growing up so we can put them to work, which is a good thing. Um, how are we looking water-wise? 1,700, so let's get the next strong water carrier just because we can and we've reduced the builders so let's get those back up to four as well just to uh, speed up the building process a little bit now we don't need an extra tailor um how we're we looking for about 343 let's get an extra forester as well and that still leaves us one settler to uh, carry around random stuff all right so you're working on metal eventually you'll pick up some scrap which we have quite a bit and look at that so that one is now producing again nice all right so what is it that we need we need to instruct the workshop to produce metal tools now the workshop is done he's now making scrap tools and let's switch him over to metal tools we'll go and pick up some uh, metal soon 
We can add a person. It means we have no settlers, which they're not too happy with. So let's just keep one of them available for bringing resources to wherever it needs to go. Exactly. Nice. I'm liking that. All right, so now let's wait for um, him to produce some metal tools. We need two of them. And then once he's done with that, uh, we're pretty much settled for all the basic needs, I think. Let's have a look what our Mr. Tutorial is going to tell us. There we go. That's the first one. He only makes one at a time, but at least we're now slowly starting to get some metal again. And that is the next one, which is on the way. Almost there, and... With our lovely new tools, we are now prepared to work effectively. Should you ever run out of metal, keep in mind that you can also instruct your workshop to manufacture tools from scrap instead of metal. Though they won't be quite as effective, it's still better than being forced to work with bare hands. Exactly. Down in the end zone, we had sufficient time and resources to educate ourselves properly. But our children don't have this luxury. We ought to build a school and pass on what we've learned. As a result, they will be able to survive and work better and more effectively. Absolutely. Okay, guys, but that's going to be for the next episode. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope that you're uh, looking to see a little bit more, more of End Zone or World Apart. Uh, I'm liking the game. I'm liking the art and definitely liking the music here on the background of this little game. And I think there's a lot more that we still have to discover. One of them being here... Um, the knowledge which we cannot even open yet because we haven't reached that part here in the tutorial yet but uh, i'm pretty confident that we're going to get to that in the next episode so thank you so much for joining if you have enjoyed it please do remember to hit that like button and i'll see you guys right back here for more uh, end zone a world apart <laughs>